Hi folks and welcome to the second part of taking the Magic Mixies Magical Crystal Ball apart. So in this one we're going to take apart this which Paul will explain about. I think it's the uh, I think you call it the smoke generation chamber it's got the uh, reservoir in uh, that holds the um, glycerin water mixture and it's got a pump in the and uh, it must have a heating element in there, so it yeah, can turn the... Uh, you, you pointed that out last yeah. time, didn't you? Well, we think it's that, but we'll have a better idea when we take it apart. This little white component here is probably a heating element. Uh, that uh, vaporises the glycerin water mixture and makes that lovely smoke that fills the dome. So, let's okay, take it apart, so then. you're going to take some screws out. Yeah. So it looks like it's sort of held in by the two, by the plastic yeah, shell. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's actually holding mm. it in place, mm. so you've got to take the whole thing apart. Oh, it's coming. Oh, oh that's, that's good. That's got it. Fan there. Oh, it's a fan, is mm. it? That's useful. It must be used for blowing the, um, the smoke into the chamber. And... I wonder how many motors there are on it. So there'll be one for a fan. I wonder if there's one for a separate pump. I suspect. Is that a motor in there? That sort of thing. Is that a pump motor? I wonder if we should power it up and see. Uh, have a look at it. And see how. Yeah. Want to start it? Uh, pumps come on. Oh, the pumps come on. And you can see it's blowing smoke out as well. So that's an air pump then. So uh, here is where the smoke comes out of. So maybe it doesn't use a pump to put the glycerin on the heating element, but it might be fed by, um, I'm not sure how it would get up there, gravity or a wick or something like that. So that, that was very quiet, of course, because the uh, vibration from the little blower motor is, wasn't transferred to the body, so you could hardly hear it operating. Mm. Let's just turn this off then. So we would have to take it apart further. Mm -hmm. These two wires, uh, they're definitely supplying uh, current to the um, heating element. Heating element. So, and it, the heating element looks like it might be on this red circuit board. So let's take it off mm. and see what it looks like. You know, when you said it's an air pump, what does mm. that mean? As as opposed to what? Um, as opposed to a liquid pump. Ah. It's um, it's it's a cure. It's uh, a, the the fan on here is designed to um, it pulls air in by rotating and pushes it up through uh, past the heating element on which the glycerin is dripping. Right. So it's a sort of fan you might get on a, a on a three D printer. They're not they're not normal fan blades. You can see they're sort of like blades that are vertically and they're on the right side, so it doesn't look like a normal fan. Right. They uh they can generate a higher pressure those types of fans. Than the ones with the fan blades on. They've got what's called a high static pressure. This is lots of uh, glycerin leakage out of this uh, tank. plastic clips as well as screws to hold the tank together. Those um, black lines are like seals. Like this is a seal, like a rubber seal. Um, and a vibration mounted with a motor. That's interesting. What's that, what's that for? It's like a, a little silicone Plug that's just pulled out of here. I'm not sure what it's for. So we know this is the circuit board with the heater on, and it's. Um, I think it might be glued in. Yes, come on. Okay, this is interesting. So the glycerin water mixture is getting up from the tank, which is like the um, the light brown bit here. Yeah. 
uh, and it's getting up on a wick rather oh, than being a pumped wick, on. Yeah, it's like a wick you would get what, in an oil lamp. That, what's it made of, that pole? Difficult to say. It's fully saturated with glycerine and it looks maybe like um, cotton or uh, some man-made material. Right. So that's how the glycerine gets up from the tank. Uh, the heating element is in. Uh, is surrounded by this uh, silver, looks like tin-plated steel. Yeah. Um, so that, that's to protect it from touching anything else. Oh, there we go. It's pulled out completely now. That's clear, isn't it? So, mm. yes, the heating element, element is inside there. So these white components, these, these are not the heating element itself. These oh, right. That's what you thought was the heating yeah, element. Yeah, I think these are our, um, thermal fuses. Right. What is the heating element? So it's inside this metal shroud, and it looks to be, without taking it apart further... It looks to be like, uh, yes, it is. It's a coil of wire. Oh, yeah. There's yes, Like you a can. fine coil of wire. Can you make that yeah, out? Yeah, I can make it out, yeah. And the wick passes directly through that. Right. So that's that thin coil of wire is heated up. That's right. That thin coil of wire is heated up. Uh, and, of course, as it gets hot, it's pressing directly on the wick with the glycerine in and it vaporises it. Huh. Interesting. And then the air pump... Um, blows air up um so that's where the wick goes down there and down that All those right. two holes in there and so this chamber here contains this heating element mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like i would say that the air blows past the air is blown up here mm -hmm. with the fan the fan with the fan with the fan at the bottom yeah mm -hmm. and uh, then it picks up some of the vapor that's been vaporized in this chamber and blows it up up the chimney right so yeah it's quite a quite an unusual uh, mechanism to have in a toy because you're using quite a bit of battery current in a, uh, with the heating elements and that's unusual in itself you know the yeah i think it takes um, it takes a lot of batteries is it six batteries mm -hmm. it takes i know it's a lot but the idea of having a heating element inside a child's toy would seem to be um, unsafe i mean of course it isn't it's been well designed it's in this metal shroud it'll be controlled by the electronics and it's got these two, what look to be thermal fuses, I would say, there. So if anything went wrong and it were to get too hot, All right. it would cut the power off. Ah. Uh, and as you can see, there's lots of these black seals everywhere to stop the glycerine getting out. But unfortunately, it has to... leaked out of the chamber yeah. Yeah, in several places. So you're going to remove the tank next, aren't you, Paul? So we can see what the fluid's like inside it. Yes, we are. Yeah. So it's got some little spring clips that hold it together. Wait. All at once. Yeah. So it's empty. Yeah, it looks like it's empty, yeah. Right. But we can see the viscosity of the glycerine in there. Uh-huh. It looks like our glycerine's been used up. And I think that's because a lot of it's uh, leaked. leaked out. So the next thing to do is to try watering down. If it needs watering down, we're not sure. Be able to compare the viscosity as it comes out of the bottle with what's left in the tank. Right. You can see the viscosity. I would say that viscosity is pretty much like what's already in. All right, so it's not watered down. No. So shall I fill the tank up? Yeah, fill it up. Okay. We'll call that full, I think. It's used about two thirds of it, yeah. right? So you're really probably best off buying a larger bottle than this. Well, I think what we better do is check that it works with this type of glycerine. We're almost sure that it will do, but we should really check it by putting it all back together. Yeah. Just thinking of ways in which the glycerine can come out if the product's turned upside down, it could drip and uh, flow past the wick and get into this chamber oh, where it shouldn't really be in any quantity. Right. It could get past this non-return valve because on ours, it looks particularly weak. Right. The spring, and I don't think it's sealing properly. So those appear to be the only two ways in which you can get out. So I'm gonna dry off this glycerine that's already on these wick, this wick. Okay, so we're gonna pass the wick through the hole. That's a bit lower, uh, a bit lower. Hmm. Interesting, doesn't sound clear. 
comes up. So that was shrouding and I hide it there. Maybe this is the reason why it was leaking out. Just discovered something by trying to put this back together, haven't you? Paul? Yeah, I thought it was leaking quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and these black seals are obviously meant to stop that. Mm -hmm. The whole thing clips and screws together quite tight. But one of the thermal fuses mounted this way is long. And uh, when you bring this top part down... It won't snap down properly. Um, it's, because it's so long, it's stopping this, mm. this part of the plastic moulding being clamped firmly yeah. against the seal. Mm. So, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a build problem there. So that seems to be why it was leaking so bad. Mm. I don't know if it's just been put in wrong or what. If it's not tipped up anymore, though, uh, it shouldn't leak anymore, should it? No, it shouldn't. As long as you keep it upright. Yeah. So there's nothing we can do about that other than replace the thermal fuse, and we're not going to do that. So we'll just have to um, screw it together. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it just won't close here. Yeah. Because of that thermal fuse being too long. And well, it's... that explains why it's been leaking so It badly. does, doesn't it? Yeah. Pretty, um, pretty bad. Point that assembly. I don't know. It's just this one, or are they all going to be like that? Well, that's the top assembled. Okay, so now we can put it back on the reservoir. The reservoir. And go the wicks. clip together. Of course it, it would have been better to put the, uh, the glycerin in after we'd assembled the tank but we could... just thought we might as well pour it Yeah in. I mean you can see what's going on more clearly mm -hmm. can't you so if, if you were doing this again obviously you just fill it in through the, the fill mm. hole here. We've got to look into sort of uh, what, what sort of adapter you could make for well that's right that. to get into to get your glycerin because into, when, you? when these when moose sells the refills yeah the nozzle is like keyed it's got the to same. go in there and mm. to press that non-return valve yeah. down yeah okay so that's screwed together again can't see any more screws to go in what we could do we could give it a whirl and see if it makes yeah. smoke yes yes Oh, moment of truth. This is going to be interesting, seeing if it works just the same. Oh, it seems to be making smoke already. Wow, it works. Works. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, I suppose we would have to run it a few times to see that it does work because uh, there might be some residual glycerine on the wick. That's the true. original original kind. That's true. Okay, so what's next then? This goes back in the side, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So this is the seal for the fan, the air pump. Let's turn that out again. Okay. That's it this time. Yeah, that's it. So that's all we've got time for in this video. Okay, so we wouldn't advise anybody to do this to the Magic Mixies Crystal Ball because uh, we aren't sure if the glycerin that we used is, is, exactly, is the exactly the same as the one that they manufactured. It's experimental. It's experimental, yeah. So this has just been an experiment. So don't really do this to your own uh, toy unless you feel ultra confident, because it may end up in its uh, destruction or malfunction. <laughs> but we're going to be trialing this for a while. We're going to do another video, trialing this out several times. And we'll report back. Well, that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching as always, and see you next time.